call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Roll call, clerk. All 12 are present. All 12 are present. Very good. We have a quorum. We will proceed on to appointment of temporary deputy clerk. Appointment of Pam Manley as temporary deputy clerk. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to approve the appointment of Pamela Manley as temporary deputy clerk. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Appointment has been approved. On to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for liberty. And now we'll be led uh, in the invocation by uh, Alder Nicholson. Thank you, Mayor. In these trying times in our country, this Aid Smith stated, God bless America. We will get through this as Americans always do. We have to stay strong. God bless America. Thank you very much, Alderman. On to approval of the minutes. Motion so approved. Moved. I think that was the, uh, Alder Galvin with the motion, seconded by Alder Dorf. No, not me. Nicholson. All right. Motion made by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Nicholson. Any uh, corrections that need to be made? Hearing no requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. Me. The ayes have it. And they are approved. On to the agenda. I'd like to um, move to amend the agenda. Okay. I'd like to have um, item W moved after item X. So have the ordinance first and then the final reading after the committee of the whole. Sorry. Okay, do we have a second for that? Second, uh, second. It. Who's seconding? Alder Lefebvre will second. All right, Alder Dorf makes the motion to amend. Alder Lefebvre seconds. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The uh, agenda is amended. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. All, yep. in all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The agenda has been approved with the amendment. On to the report by the mayor. Um, just wanted to touch on a few things before we get into the, the heart of the meeting. Obviously, this community, the state, and nation are still dealing with the outbreak of, of COVID-19. Um, Chief Litton will get into some of the details here relevant to the community later on, but I just wanted to take a moment to, to thank you all for continuing to be community leaders in a during a really difficult period of time. Um, also want to thank our community members for really stepping up, um, doing the right thing, uh, staying home whenever possible. Um, special thanks, of course, to our healthcare workers, um, you know, our first responders, but also folks just on, on the front lines of providing services in this community, all the people that are employed at our, our grocery stores and, and other fr front line logistics employees who are uh, making sure that we can still move forward as a society um, even during this this very difficult time um, also just wanted to touch on uh, something that's that's also COVID-19 related uh, but something that we've been working on here in the city um, particular thanks to our clerk Teske and her staff for all the work that they've been doing on this election um, in really um, kind of incredible circumstances. We've seen a deluge of uh, requests for absentee balloting, which is a really positive thing, um, but we still do have, I think, around 7,000 requests in the queue. So I would just ask the community to be patient, ask alders to, to communicate um, where we're at with some of those requests and um, and ask people to, to be patient. We, we want people to continue to make those requests. We want people to vote by mail. Um, I have never been in 
the position before of of asking people not to show up on election day and vote um, but that's where we sit i'm encouraging each and every person um, to vote by mail and and avoid um, coming in person on election day uh, of course took the um the unexpected step uh, for me and uh, you know for a lot of people i think involved here to to bring suit against the state of wisconsin um, asking for some changes to be made here to put the entire election through the mail to abide by the public health guidelines that we've received um, from you know president trump's cdc all the way down to our brown county public health um, we were unsuccessful in, in bringing that suit but there is an ongoing uh, case in the western district our law department did provide uh, an amicus brief a front of the court brief um, and and clerk teske provided a lot of the relevant details for that um, we are not sure exactly what's going to come of that case they they heard um, judge conley federal judge heard um, arguments in that case and is is expected to make a decision here um, as early as tonight or tomorrow but it could be a few days so um, so we don't have some of those finalized election day plans um, until we we get word from the federal court um, but we've been talking multiple times a day um, trying to to figure out the best contingencies based on the fact that um, on the, on the last count we're down from 270 uh, poll workers on election day down to 17. there are a number of folks who have stepped up in the community and, uh, and offered to, to volunteer and we very much appreciate that um, but of course they you know they haven't been trained um, so that's that's an additional um, issue for our clerk's office to work through um, so we will be um, providing as much information as soon as possible as we get it and uh, of course you know providing that uh, um, quickly to to alders um, but just again would would request that you all um, you know ask for patience in the community understanding um, that people are anxious they've got a lot of questions they they want to know where their absentee ballot is and, and why it's been delayed um, but just you know just asking you all to express the, the pressure that um, that our clerk is under and the, the incredible workload that everybody in that office is bearing um, just also wanted to touch on uh, a couple development questions uh, we have a proposal here a term sheet moving forward um, on behalf of, of merge development in our shipyard uh, really encouraged by the design that they've presented to us uh, the density of the development there um, the valuation on the project that's that's been proposed so I'm excited about um, about what the project looks like and of course encouraging um, folks to, to ask all the necessary questions but um, but at the end of the day encouraging um, council support for that of course and then um, also wanted to touch on an item that's before the park committee um, related to the the East River Trail um, this is a project that's been ongoing um, for I don't know half my lifetime maybe um, and this is a really integral um, piece of that that puzzle um, so I know we'll have an opportunity to, to talk through some of those details in open and in closed session in all likelihood um, but I think this is this is an opportunity that we, we don't want to pass up because uh, the community's you know been wanting this this connection for some time uh, the East River Trail and it's also something that I think would be of tremendous benefit to the community as a whole but of course the um, you know the the old main uh, district and all the business owners and, and residents uh, in that area of the city um, finally just wanted to touch on a resolution that is before you under committee of the whole related to liquor licenses um, and renewal fees there so obviously we just had a recent debate about uh, about those fees and um, you know it feels like a hundred years ago but at that point we were advocating for for an increase based on the fact that um, we have some significant costs associated with with background checks and other things um, other surrounding communities are, were at a, a higher level um, but fast forward to the age of, of COVID-19 and, and obviously a lot of those the holders of those licenses have been um, really drastically impacted by um, by the virus and uh, by the you know the health orders associated with the pandemic so what we're suggesting here is to go down to statutory minimums for those um, those classes of license holders that have been most uh, directly impacted 
and um, and asking for for council to um, to understand that and and hopefully uh, approve that change. So apologize for the the length of the report tonight, but just wanted to touch on a, a few things, and uh, that concludes it. And now we are on to announcements. There, there. Yes. I got a question about absentee ballots. Yeah. So for some. Um, uh, federal judge uh, yeah if you have questions you know feel free to re reach out to the clerk's office but now would not be the appropriate time to discuss some of those issues I just want to know what they should do with absentee ballots if it's after the election if they can't get them in uh, you brought it up I just want a response please thank you yep so we do have a drop box at City Hall um, so if people are receiving those ballots uh, very close to election day, and, and they're concerned that there, I'm about when might not they get come back late. through the mail. We would encourage people to, um, you know, to come elderly, down to city hall. Seriously, please, could you re just respond? All right, we are on to announcements. I have one. My light might be on. Alderdorf, go ahead. My my light's on. Also, Alder <laughs> Lefebvre. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, this is Alder Dorf, and I, I think all of us were probably invited to go on to the White House COVID-19 briefing um, via our email, and I did go on that call. There were about 5,000 people on the call. I'm just going to tell you two things about it, and then the question that I, the first ask that they made of us as local officials was to use our positions to echo the 30 days to stop the spread. And the second ask was to remind people to fill out the census, even though we're in the midst of this coaster. So I am reminding everyone, please go online and fill out the census. And then the question I tried to ask, but my, my question did not get on was, um, the state of Wisconsin is planning to have in-person elections on April 7th. We are being asked to stop the spread by 30 days. Is there any way to really make this safe for voters and poll workers? But I didn't get the answer. So thank you. That's it. Thanks, Alder. Appreciate the comment and question. Uh, Alder Scannell. Hello? Alder Scannell, go ahead. Mayor, we can't hear you if you're talking. Alder Scannell. Alder Scannell, okay, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't hear you. So, if you called me or not, okay. Uh, lockdown, but believe it or not, there's still a lot going on. Uh, a lot of virtual uh, entertainment going on, and uh, possibilities for all kinds of stuff. If you go to downtowngreenbay.com. They'll have a list of restaurants, and you can get takeout or make deliveries, buy gift cards. Uh, there's a number of virtual events, Downtown Green Bay's Facebook Live, music every Wednesday and Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, all the way through April 24th. So if we get done quick here, we can catch the, the one tonight. We got a great lineup of artists. I won't go through it, but it's a, it should be a lot of fun. Also, uh, the Art Garage has an open mic Friday, April 10th from 7 to 9 p.m. Music, poetry, uh, ukulele. I, I know I said music, but ukulele, that's its own category. And, of course, uh, <laughs> comedy, funny stuff. Uh, even though we're all locked down, there's still a lot to do. Check out downtowngreenbay.com. Uh, it lists, uh, it has links to all these things. Uh, and uh, Downtown Green Bay's Facebook Live Music. Enjoy. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alder Scannell. Uh, I think Alder Lefebvre was also interested in yes. speaking. Go ahead. Yes, yes. <clears throat> um, I wanted to let everyone know uh, my conversations with regards to the dike and with um, Director uh, Grainier. We had a phone conversation, and uh, it wasn't related as well as it it should be, I think. Um, I did want to, um, I did tell them that I had contacted a couple engineers talking to them, and Steve said, well, then you need them to call me, so I, I forwarded um, Bill Acker to him, and after, after talking to Grenier, Bill talked to him, and then he called me back, 
And uh, Director Green mentioned that they will, because of the permitting process, it's kind of hard with all the residents out here. He has to get everybody to sign that permit and the easement. If he changes anything on the dike, that he is going to do the dike back to the 73 flood as it was then because we have a lot of stones that are missing. He's going to bring all that in. And after I thought of that, I think that's a good plan to go forward right now. And then if Director Grinier can... Uh, look at uh, the dike should actually be raised two feet to meet the FEMA floodplain. It's at 103. It should be 105, at least that. If he can come up with a, um, a dollar amount, what is that going to cost to the city? And then he can bring it back to the uh, finance committee, if that's go there first, and then back to the council and see how we can pay for this that we can go forward with that later on. And then the Neighborhood Association is more than willing to help getting the permits and the easements that we everybody has to sign out here, that we will work with the department and helping them to get this done so that we can um, make it safe for everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat. So everybody is safe out here on the bay and to keep the, uh, the dike and sound uh, condition so that it does not breach and go all the way over to Eastman Avenue because that's like eight nine hundred households would be involved. So this is um, a good step that we can work with. So when Steve comes forward with that request for monies for the first part, I would hope that everybody will be behind them and support him. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. Alder Galvin. Uh, th thank you, Your Honor. I'm just asking, uh, Your Honor, that in the future we uh, we make a difference between announcements and proposals of agenda items, and uh, that way we can save time here and, and get on to the agenda items that that are need to be covered. Thank you. Okay. Points well taken. Thanks, Alder. Now we. I apologize. I just thought that you need to know. Because I can't talk to everybody. Yep. That's a That's meeting. Very so good, Alder. We are on to, on to appointments. You. Can't hear you, Mr. Mayor. We are on to appointments. I will entertain a motion on reappointments. Approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to confirm the reappointments before you. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. On to public hearings. Um, so we have two items for public hearings. Um, item one is an ordinance rezoning property located at 1860 West Mason Street from general commercial to highway commercial. Item two is a final resolution regarding vacation of portions of public right-of-way, Acme Street and Lawrence Street. Uh, is there anyone present on the call who would like to speak to these items? Is there anyone present who would like to speak to these items? Is there anyone who would like to speak to these items? Clerk, please let the record reflect that no one is present to speak to these items. On to ordinances, second reading for adoption. Motion to suspend the rule. Second. There's been a motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to suspend the rules, take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You motion have, to adopt. You guys have it. The rules are suspended. And there's been a motion to adopt items L1 through L4, made by Alder Scannell. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Please use the board. All right, those are adopted 12-0. On to report of the RDA. Motion to approve. Second. By, by Alder Dorf, second. 
<coughs> motion made by Alder Scandal, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve Report M, which is the report of the Redevelopment Authority from the meeting on March 24, 2020. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Four. Any others? Your Honor, do we have to take up six when we do parks, or how you know, they're related? Can we yeah, take them we up could, at the same we could time, address, We could address that uh, now we're at park committee. Well, I'm not sure if it makes sense to approve this, and then uh, we don't approve uh, the item for parks. Yeah, we could, we could take it up now if you'd like. Uh, I would like. There you go. Very good. So we have uh, items four and six to be held separately. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items four and six. And. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motions made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve item four. Item was pulled by. Johnson. Alder Johnson, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of questions for Director Bonk. Um, I participated in the discussion at Redevelopment Authority. Um, I like the agreement a lot. Uh, there's just a couple of things that sort of came to mind afterwards that I wanted to get some clarification on. One is we had indicated that we would make available uh, parking within that agreement. My question is, are we committing to making that parking available for free or do we have the right to charge for monthly permit fees like we would in any of our other publicly owned lots? So uh, this is Director Bonk. So that has not been determined yet. Um, we were looking at those parking lots are being constructed as part of the overall um, shipyard development, um, but we did not entertain any type of um, lease agreement and how those spaces would be used. Um, I think it was made clear though that, um, you know, that they would be done on an as available basis um, so that they wouldn't be for the exclusive use of the development. Right, and that was in particular, I think, to make sure that we preserve that, that right. And if you're comfortable that this agreement does that, I'm, I'm good. And the reason I think we ought to do that is just because that would obviously create some security for them that we're holding spaces, uh, but I but I don't know that I would feel comfortable holding uh, a designated number of spaces without ensuring that we have the ability to fund the maintenance of those locks. Uh, correct. There's not. There's nothing. There's no exclusive right to to use them. Nothing's been um, delegated to them exclusively. Okay. Uh, second question that I have is related to item. Uh, letter B, number one, letter D, related to the forgivable equity investment. And um, you did a nice job of explaining what this means at RDA. Um, one of the questions that sort of arose was, uh, you know, solvency or liquidity of the developer to repay that amount in the event of a default. Um, and I know that you had indicated that, you know, we would obviously look at financials that, that would help shore that up. My question is, is it is it plausible this to require a bond in the event that the developer were to default? I don't know if that would be a, a, a recommended use in this particular instance. So looking for your feedback. Sure, I, I think based on that in the development agreement and talking with um, you know Attorney Chavez, I think we would probably either A, um, draft a separate agreement or an attachment to be that preferred uh, forgivable um, equity investment. Uh, so that would be, you know, added on as an attachment to the document um, or as part of the financials that would be required, have something in from the bank um, or the financing institution stating that that um, investment or that cash could be available within a prescribed amount of times. So, you know, generally we say, you know, within 90 days. Um, so it'll be addressed one of those two ways in, in the development agreement itself. Okay, thank you. And I, I was just suggesting the bond is obviously an option and I trust that uh, you'll explore, you know, what other remedies that we might have available. My biggest concern is similar to the, those of the committee, which is making sure that there is a way to recover that if, if needed. Um, and then the third 
question, and you did explain this and cover this for us at RDA. I'd like you to do it for the full council. Um, specifically, we've made a, a commitment to keep the funding of the shipyard off of the levy. And for us to successfully do that, and, and I'm going to round the numbers for the sake of discussion, I think we needed to create about 30 to 35 million of development in the next eight to 10 years. Could, if, if you happen to know those numbers, if you could share them. And then if we do allow up to 70% of the available TIF to fund this particular project, does that leave us enough uh, buffer to secure additional development to ensure that the shipyard is kept off the levy? Sure, give me one second. I just want to pull something up in terms of some of the numbers. Uh, so yeah, so that, that's one of the things that, uh, of course, all along has been important for us, um, you know, to discuss. I think, you know, council made it clear uh, in terms of their directives, um, you know, where they would like to have this go. Um, and, and really, you know, being, um, you know, at the time when this was done two years ago, um, you know, being a project that was not going to be supported by the levy, that was going to be totally supported by, by increment. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of, of what we've done, um, you know, initially, I think, yes, you're correct. We talked about, um, you know, 30 to 35, 30 to 35 million worth of um, new development in the area, um, really to provide enough increment to provide funding for the, the shipyard park itself, um, you know, in order to keep things moving. Um, we adjusted those numbers a little bit to account for an understanding that, you know, projects as they came through, um, you know, may be requiring some additional TIF incentive. Um, and so when we put together the project plan for TID 22, uh, which council approved last year, um, in that project plan, um, we look at an estimated value of somewhere we're gonna need between about 40 um, to $45 million worth of development, um, but we'll need that by 2030 to 2035 um, to be fully online. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more um, than was initially there, but um, there's additional years. I mean, we're talking still 10 years out to get that development. Um, but then it does also account for in incentives um, that are in there and any debt service that we may have um, and any other part of just how we manage our kids. So um, with that, we feel that this is a, a very, um, you know, uh, great start towards getting some of that. Um, with that, I think it makes great use in terms of the, the taxable value per acre uh, you have on this uh, parcel. Um, it allows room for future development on the parcel itself. Uh, I think that surface parking on, on the west side of the site um, could bring more increment. Um, and this is something, again, we haven't even talked about touching, you know, development on the lots, you know, along Broadway, Badger Sheet Metal, or some other parcels. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I think we, you know, in terms of the revenues, um, this is definitely um, keeps us on schedule, if not ahead of schedule. Um, I think on the other side, we've been very cognizant, and, and I think Director Ellen Becker can affirm, uh, in terms of our borrowing for the shipyard itself. Um, you know, council authorized, I think about nine and a half million of borrowing. Um, we've been taking that off in small increments um, just to make sure that as we go through, you know, we're getting these projects in line to be able to help pay for it. Uh, so yes, based on this, this project and where we're at, I believe we're on, on track on, on all those fronts. Okay, thank you, Dr. Vonk. And then I would just maybe, I think that's what I've got for questions. I appreciate your answers on that. I would obviously support uh, the term sheet. The development agreement would be yet to follow. Um, you know, and I suspect that that's where more conversation would occur, but obviously urban development is, you know, comes with challenges. It has difficult lots. You have contaminated sites. Unfortunately, the city of Green Bay doesn't have the luxury of, of urban greenfields, um, like some of our neighboring suburbs do. And, and TIF obviously supports, um, bringing these blighted properties to buildable condition that can accelerate urban density and a higher assessed valuation per acre. So, um, so for that reason, I definitely support uh, the term sheet and, and, you know, trust that the development agreement when it comes through uh, will reflect uh, obviously everything that we have here and perhaps provide some answers to those couple of questions I asked. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. I think Alder Vanderleest was interested in, in speaking. Alder Vanderleest. 
Alder Stoyer. Alder Stoyer. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is, thank you, Honor. This is for Director Vox, this question. Uh, let's see here. All right. Um, with this development, Director, um, where will Green Bay be in terms of our equalized value? I realize we're kind of in the 5 to 6% range, or by, whereby a municipality can usually go up to 12%. So I was just wondering where we're at right now as a city. I, I realize this is only one project and it might not move it that much, but I'd, I'd, li I'd just like your answer on that. Um, sure, and I, I, I will defer to Director Ellen Becker if I'm off. Um, I believe as of the end of, of last year, um, when we were putting our, our tax increment plans together, um, the city was at um, about $6.6 .6 billion of equalized value. Um, of that, uh, about 335 million was an increment. Uh, so we were at about 5.35% um, equalized value. Again, the state allows you to go up to 12% in the tax increment district. Uh, given that this project is about $21 million, um, it itself would only move that percentage maybe about three, um, maybe four tenths of a, a percent. So we're still well within our, our range um, of beating that, that 12% test. Um, I thank you for that. Um, like I said, I think, you know, TIF is a good tool for planning purposes. And I think the fact that we're well within our range and with this uh, group with Merge coming in, I, I have a feeling that they're going to do a very nice job. So I, I, I concur with Alder Johnson on his comments. And thank you for that. I'm done. Thanks, Alder. Anyone else like to speak on this item? All right. Hearing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. On to item six. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve item six. And the item was pulled by the Alder from the seventh. Or Alder Scannell, you have the floor. Uh, well, I, I support this. I'm just wondering if we need to go into closed session. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Um, my biggest concern uh, was taking up both items both parks and this item, they're, they're related. So it's, it seems to me we should be making a decision. One decision affects the other. Uh, both can be handled in closed session. So can we take them both in closed session now? I think it'd be easiest just to move forward with this item. And if it is successful, um, then, you know, that's the path that we would take with the parks item. If it is not, then, you know, that's the other path. Okay. Then... Um, is there is there anyone that wants to go into closed session? I, I don't need to discuss it. I don't need to go into closed session or anything. I don't need any further information. If... Okay. I don't. I don't either. Yeah. No, I have no other questions. If there aren't any uh, requests to go into closed, uh, Alder Scannell, you could proceed. Make a, or... Well, the, the motion must to approve it. So. I think uh, we've got a couple requests to speak here. Uh, Alder Brunette. So this item right now is it's an agenda item report to basically say the city is in favor of working with RDA and Parks Department to move, uh, to purchase the property, if that's the way I understand it. So even if we vote yes on this, we can still discuss it later on in the agenda. So a vote for this in the affirmative doesn't necessarily mean that we can't vote against the parks agenda item i think that would be the thing that would originate that would that would be the action item in other words so if that's true if the city attorney could weigh in on that i'd be in favor of this motion but then obviously later down in the discussion at parks attorney chavez
but if you guys I'm sorry, could you guys hear me? Yes, uh, now we can. Oh, could you hear me at all before? No, no. <laughs> um, so the what I was saying is it really depends on, it's up to you on all on how you want to handle it. Um, my understanding from the motion was that, or from the request, was that you guys wanted to take them up together. Do you want to vote on them separately? That's fine. Um, and so it's, it's really up to you all as to how you want to actually handle them as far as voting on them. Sounds good. So the understanding is that they will be handled independently. Um, so Alder Brunette, um, yeah, the, the two separate votes. Alder Vanderlees. Request a board vote when it gets to that point. Yeah. Very good. Alder Vanderlees. Alder Vanderleest. I don't see him anywhere. I don't. It's he disappeared. No. Oh. I believe he's dropped out of civic clerk here um, but we as we discussed this uh, we'll be able to touch on this item under park committee so we're going to move forward uh, motion has been made to approve and seconded um, Mr. Uh, Mayor I still I have a my request oh, scandal, to go ahead button. go ahead okay uh, so I, I just want to understand if we approve this but then when we get to parks and say we don't approve that, do we have to then come back to this item again? No. But how how would the RDA work with the city to acquire that property if we tell parks not to acquire that property? Exactly. So it has nothing to act on. Yeah. So I don't I don't understand how we could approve this and not approve the other item also so maybe we should take them up together or maybe we should do parks first well, we can just this one we could cross that bridge when we get to it if it fails then we can entertain this item again to reconsider okay all right well i so, think it makes this one a moot point well we still need to reconsider i would alder think. alder you're out of order all right so if we're prepared to approve the item let's move forward All right, there's been a motion to approve and second it. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. No. Nay. All right, the ayes have it. The item has been approved. On to INS. Motion to approve. Second. Motion, motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report N, which is the report of the Improvement and Services Committee for the like meeting on March 25th, 2020. Any items you'd wish to handle separately here? Uh, number one. Number one. Any others? Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item one. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Uh, this item was pulled by the Alder from the fourth, Alder Galvin. Is that right? Yes. Thank you, you, Your Honor. You bet. You have the floor. Honor. Um, I, I understand why the, the two owners of the businesses want a, uh, uh, to be released from their obligation to shovel the sidewalk. Um, I guess maybe I, I would like to make an amendment to this that they have to apply for that uh, that waiver or that variance every year um, as we develop our Bay Beach in the, in the area down there. And as people become more mobile, uh, biking and walking uh, it may be necessary in the near future that they do shovel that sidewalk so people access the, the properties down there. I don't want this to get lost in the shuffle and it'd be something that uh, 
someone doesn't have feel that they have an obligation to, to clear for pedestrians and bike traffic and such. Very good. Thanks, Alder. The Alder has made an amendment um, to make this um, make this decision made on an annual basis to allow okay. for the um, for this these residents not to clear their sidewalk. I believe we had a second. Who was that? Me, Scannell. Alder Scannell. All in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, the item has been amended. Onto Motion adoption. to approve as amended. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve the item as amended. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved as amended. On to report O. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve report O, which are the reports of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meetings on March 9, 2020 and March 23, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Yes, uh, one, two, and eight. One, two, and eight. <clears throat> Any others? Okay, hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved with the exception of items one, two, and eight. Move to approve item one. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to approve item one. Uh, that item was pulled by Alder Galvin. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. And I have the, uh, the same concern. <clears throat> For the, all three of the items that I pulled, we have an ordinance in place that for uh, outdoor patios that are uh, associated with a, a liquor license, that they have uh, a barrier, a wall or a fence um, of a certain height and thickness to prevent the ingress and egress of alcoholic beverages from that patio um, to the outside on the sidewalks and the streets. And I've noticed a pattern that uh, we've been approving um, variances to this ordinance on almost every property that requests in fact i don't, can't remember one that we have it and i i think maybe we've forgotten what that ordinance was there for and, and that is to prevent uh the ingress and egress of alcohol and, and other contraband items from those patio areas and uh, i'm i'm would like a um a motion to deny uh to have those uh those uh, fences uh, raised up to the level that they're supposed to be at in the thickness, or that uh, I will make a, uh, if, if I don't get that to pass, then I'm gonna uh, have a communication later on. Thank you. So the motion has been made Can to, we, Alder from the first. I just wondered if, if we could um, amend that to send that back to committee and have the committee ask for that, or would not that, is it not so, just the fences that you're concerned Well, so we do have a motion about. on the floor. Oh. Do we have a second? Nicholson. Second. second. Alder, Alder Galvin. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I, 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 I would, uh, I would uh, be open to uh, sending it back to the committee. I'm just, I'm surprised that uh, the law department and the police department continue not to have any concerns about this. Um, um, because uh, at one point this was a huge issue and, and obviously that's why the ordinance was created. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Would you like Chief Smith or Attorney Chavez to weigh in at all? Uh, give them time. If this gets sent back to uh, committee, uh, give them time to research it and uh, Very good. Uh, you know, just have some thoughts uh, ready for that time. And that would be your preference for all three of these items, Alder? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Attorney Chavez, would we be able to uh, send all items back to committee with one one vote? If you suspend the rule, yes. Um, but just as a clarification, number one um, actually pertains to extending it to the parking lot for four dates. Uh, number two is the one that pertains to the um, outdoor patio space. Uh, 
Good point. It, it, you're right. I, I stand corrected. Um, I would remove item one from that. Okay. Well, let's let's go ahead and approve then, if that's uh, if those are your wishes, Alder. Approve item one, and then move on to the other two items. All right. Motion of approve. Thank you. Sawyer. Second. Motion made by Alder Sawyer, seconded by Alder. Galvin. Galvin. All in favor of approving that item, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Nicholson, nay. Noted, Alder. And now we are on to item two. So we have a couple speakers here. Uh, Alder Scannell. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we did discuss this at committee, and uh, the police really these uh, haven't had an issue quite some time with this, and that's why we've been from committee, we've been okaying it. Uh, I think maybe perhaps uh, this has become a situation like the moratoriums. It's it's nice to have on the books in case we ever start having a problem again. But this problem seems to have subsided considerably, and the police and the law department have really had no issues with it whatsoever for quite some time. So uh, I'm not sure that um, we could certainly bring it back and start having a conversation with <laughs> the owners about how uh, difficult, what kind of difficulties they they'd have to meet the ordinance, uh, but I'm not sure that it's really an issue anymore like it used to be. Um, it certainly doesn't sound that way from uh, the input from staff, which is why the committee uh, has been approving these and pushing them onto the council. So um, I guess uh, I guess I would support sending it back just so we can get. Uh, the community, the, the businesses input on it, but uh, I'm really not sure it's uh, it's an issue that uh, well, we'll see what kind of burden it puts on the on the business owners, but it, for quite some time this has not been an issue so, right. thank you Alder Alder Stoyer uh, Thank you Your Honor uh, I'm on the committee as well and, and I, I think especially with uh, the sardine can over the years, you know, there have been issues there. Uh, I listened to a lot of apartments and also listened to the police on it. And we asked some pretty pointed questions of the owner was, um, staff. And I, I, I have a feeling that we covered it pretty well, but I'm more than willing to listen to it again. Uh, we've had neighbors, uh, at the sardine can who complained about noise. Uh, we've had point of clarification, your honor. Uh, Elder, so yes. you're talking about the first item. That that's when all the issues were were with the, their outdoor event. Oh, okay. So we're looking at just the licensed premise here, right? Okay. Well, listen, I, I'm all, all I'm all in favor of bringing that back, and uh, uh, sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. I'm done. Uh, Alder Johnson. Mayor, thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, I would support again that way. I'm not sure that I would support uh, punishing an individual request um, when they've kind of gone through the committee process and have done everything that they've been asked to do. And and in this, I, I'm only going to speak to item two in particular because that's the one that's on the floor. Um, but in this particular instance, timing of this one is kind of important too. Uh, because Howard Street is being reconstructed, which is the street that their property is located on, and they're attempting, um, you know, the extent, they're basically just extending their patio to be identical to what's already there. And the timing of this is critical because they're trying to time out the construction with when the street reconstruction occurs. So in an effort to minimize the impact to the business, um, I do think timing is of the essence. Um, I support this. They've been a great facility. I understand they've had challenges in the past, but they've um, they've been very responsive and have listened to everything that law enforcement has asked, and they've responded very favorably in that regard. And so because this isn't something new, it's an extension of something that already exists, um, I would actually favor um, the approval of this, this one just because it's, again, complementing um, or extending what's already there. And, and if problems arise because of it, as, as Scannell alluded to, we have a way to address that. 
Um, and so for that reason, I support approving this tonight. And I, if I'm not mistaken, as a point of order, Mayor, I don't think that there was a motion on the floor to to actually approve this. So I would I would make that motion. Thank you, Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. And um, I would remind uh, the Alders that, and I think uh, Attorney Chavez can weigh in when I'm, I'm done speaking, that when we give property owners permission not to follow our ordinance, and then if there's problems further down the road, it is infinitely harder for the city to make the property owners to comply with the city ordinance. They'll bring up items such as cost, burden to them to have to go through construction, add cost of getting the, uh, the thing that's in question up to ordinance. And I, I think uh, allers also forget that the same people will not be owning these properties forever. And as we've experienced in the past, these uh, sites can change ownership. We get new owners in there. We have new problems. And again, they're going to be grandfathered in because we were short-sighted and we weren't looking uh, 20, 30 years down the road. Now, there may not be any problems right now, but I would suggest that might be because the property owners around there have pretty much just gotten used to finding um, empty beer bottles, beer glasses, cups, and the other debris that should be staying on the property, but they find it around their property and after a while complaining, nothing happens. And so they, they just don't bother to say anything anymore. And uh, I remember people talking about the amount of uh, uh, liquor containers being left around these properties not, not a long time ago, but in the very recent past. So I, again, I, I, uh, I'm not in favor of granting this right now, and I'd like to see this sent back to committee. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Nicholson. I concur with Gal. Um, you know, Alder Gal Galvin was a police officer for years, so was I. We have to look down the road 10, 15 years with a different owner. If we input this, and override our ordinance, I feel we're gonna have some problems. We have to look down the road. Uh, what does our ordinance say? Do we allow it or not? Was that a question for law, Alder? Of course it is, Eric, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Johnson for a second time. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I, I just uh, maybe again a point of clarification that this this particular request is simply extending the patio that already exists and matching the existing design. And I think that's a relevant point to make because it, to deny this request, it still puts the property in a position where half the property would be out of compliance with the existing ordinance anyway. So you're you're stuck with that challenge, if you will whether you approve this or not, you're gonna to have to come back if you wanna undo it in the future. So in the spirit of being expeditious with helping this business meet their construction timelines and what's going on with that street, I do support this. And I also do support kicking back a communication to talk about future requests that come forward. But win or lose on this particular, um, this particular item tonight, that property's I mean, if you deny it, then okay, so you make them put up the, the right size wall and all the barriers that you're requesting, but the three fourths of the other property that already exists is still not meeting those requirements. So let them be consistent with what's already in place. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. And, and Mayor, real quickly, just yes. again, a point of order, I did make the motion, I, and I could be mistaken, I didn't hear original motion in the second, so if I'm not mistaken, we're debating right now on a motion that currently does not have a second. Do we have a second for the motion to approve? Second. Weary. Very good. Um, Alder Galvin for a second time. Alder Nicholson for a second time. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, 
Can I ask, uh, legal, what does our ordinance state? Does it allow it or not? Attorney Chavez? Okay, so uh, I pulled the ordinance itself. My understanding of it is that the the six there's a six foot requirement for fences around patios, and that requirement can be waived if there are no objections from law or from the um, the police department. Um, as far as the lot apartments review has gone, um, there hasn't been a reason to to deny it because the simply because the fence did not comport with the six foot requirement because the impact on the properties um, just didn't exist when we're looking at it. Um, so yes, there is a requirement for a six foot fence. Um, this would be waiving the requirement of the six foot fence um, and that is permitted by our ordinance. Thank you. I, I support sending it back. You. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Is there any fence at all? And if so, how high is the fence? How high will the fence be? Who's your question for, Alder? Uh, whoever can answer my question. I, I don't. There's a fence now on that in that patio. I, I used to look out at that for a long time when I worked at the Broadway Central Office. I know there's a fence around it now, but is are they saying no fence around the patio at all? Is that what, what they're asking for? Does anyone know? Uh, this is Vanessa. My understanding is it is no uh, waiver regarding the height. I don't know what the actual um, height is, though. Okay. Thank you. So then my understanding is there still is going to be a fence. There's a if that particular item I would have to vote in favor of because there's there is already a fence the so it just would be extending it thank you thank you Alder so seeing no other Alders in the queue to speak we have a motion to approve by Alder Johnson seconded by Alder Weary all in favor will signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. opposed nay no 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 no, Nicholson, no. All right, we will uh, use the board here. And that motion is approved eight to four. On to item eight. And the motion here, Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. The motion again on this one would be to send it back to committee. Second. Motion made by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Dorf to send item eight back to committee. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been referred back to Protection and Policy Committee. On to report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion, motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Lefebvre to approve Report O, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Any names for which you'd like to be recorded as abstaining? Any names under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, Aye. nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to the Finance Committee. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Lefebvre to approve Report Q, which is the report of the Finance Committee from the meeting on March 23, 2020. Any items under this report to handle separately? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. Hi. 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 Point of order, Mayor. I'm trying to. Go ahead, Alder. 
How much debt do we have in the city of Green Bay? Hold on, what, uh, what item are you on here? Hang on, I'm... Would you like to pull item two? I believe, yes, sir. Number two, I just got a question. That does the city have right now, please? Okay, item two will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of their report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You guys have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. To approve. Motion made by Alder second. from the first. Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Lefebvre to approve. Uh, Alder from the third pulled the item. You have the floor, Alder Nicholson. Question, uh, Director, how much debt does the city have right now, please? Director Allen Becker. Yes, I will look at a 2019 year end. Um, I am pulling up the document right now. At the end of 2019, we had total debt outstanding of $201,863,000. That is between our long-term bonds, our short-term notes, our state trust fund loans are outstanding four point seven million dollar loan for the HUD for the and then it also that also includes all of our RDA um, debt, which includes all of the KI Convention Center debt. Thank you. Roughly um what did, uh ten years ago oh, or fifteen or twelve or eleven. I mean, has it been growing? Has it been going down? Um, I would have to pull another document. Get hold of a moment. Thank you. five years ago I mean just I mean, right yep I'm just pulling up an, a document you so um, I have information um, it has been growing um, if you go back five years which would have been 2015 it was at 190 million and now we're at 201 Thank your you. Large, uh, let me. Um, what your largest increase has been sanitary and storm. They went from 13 million up to 26 million. So the really the 10 million growth was all in sanitary storm. Canada Guy Convention Center went down slightly. TIF has gone down slightly. Um, Jet Levy has gone up gone up a little bit. But both basically the 10 million increase was all sanitary and storm infrastructure projects. Thank you. Done, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion. Mayor, I have my button pushed, Alder Johnson. Alder Johnson, go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to provide a quick point of clarification on this. I'm more than comfortable with this being referred to uh, uh, to staff for continued work. Essentially what I was looking for here is a determination on the threshold because I've noticed in the last uh, a couple of budget cycles a tendency to, um, uh, to bond for smaller expenses our capital budgets out of the, the levy 
And so this last uh, one in particular, I noticed 15,000 for windows on a building, you know, and it's just really more of a question about what are those minimum thresholds and what really ought to get paid for to the levy versus what we're bonding for. So I just wanted to at least provide that point of clarification. If there's a broader discussion that needs to occur on debt, I would think that that ought to be part of our five-year capital plan discussion. But um, certainly I do think it is a topic uh, ripe for additional exploration by this, by this council. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to approve, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That has been approved. On to report of the Park Committee. Move to approve. approve. Motion Second. to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report R, which is the report of the Park Committee from the meeting on March 25th, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? No items? Well, four. <laughs> I thought there might be one. Four. Okay, item four will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Wishes regarding item four. Motion to approve. Second. Motion, motion to approve was made by... Alder Galvin. Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Dorf. The item was pulled by Alder Dorf. You have the floor. And I would like to yield the floor to someone who would really like to speak on this item. I pulled it because I knew people wanted to speak on it. I'm just in favor of it. So Thanks, I will Alder. yield. Okay. Appreciate that. Alder Vanderleest. Alder Vanderleest. Mayor, if I might suggest, if he's calling from a phone, he may need to hit uh, star six to go off mute. Thanks, Alder. We'll move on to Alder Stoyer for the time being. Alder Stoyer. Um, I've had uh, some opportunity to talk to a few people about this, and I was looking at the pros and cons of this uh, particular issue. Um, according to, and, I, and Director Vitschite um, can fill in a little bit as well, but it sounds like there's already existing grant and bond funding already in place for this project, some possible DNR dollars coming up, up the way as well. I think the reason I'm in favor of this project is the fact that uh, the redevelopment authority uh, will be allowed to look forward to getting a possible single family home in there as well as a possible multi family development. Uh, this investment of the more than pay for itself over time. Uh, one thing the city cannot do, we cannot condemn properties for trail development. Uh, we used to be able to do that, but not anymore. So we have an opportunity here to move forward. Uh, the city would also have to pay relocation costs for the businesses that would be there up to 30000 each. That would cause some problem as well. I realize that uh, the appraisal by the owners is a little bit higher. The city was, they were at five seventy five. the city was at 245000 Point of order, and I think you should, Mayor. We should talk about that in closed session. That's not yeah. appropriate. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do that. I can, I can hold off. Thanks, Alder. Alder Vanderleest. Alder Scannell. Alder Scannell. You're muted. I'm muted. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Hello? <laughs> Alder Scannell, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes. Hello? 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 
Alder, go ahead. Hello. All right, I make a motion to go into closed session. Second. I read the language. Uh, the committee may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.85, subsection L, subsection E, Wisconsin statutes, for purposes of deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining reasons. The committee may thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to section 19.85, subsection 2, Wisconsin statutes, to report the results of the closed session and consider the balance of the agenda. Thank you, Alder. There was a motion to go into closed session um, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. We will use the board. Can you put Celestine? Can you put people in the waiting room? I'm sorry. Put them in the waiting room. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alders, yep. All right, that motion was approved 10 to 2. Just include everybody. Mayor, uh, who's the two besides, well, one was me, but who was the other one? I'm curious. Alder Nicholson and Alder Galvin were opposed. Thank you. So we are in closed session. All right, I will entertain a motion uh, to head motion back to into the motion. Motion. motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Second. Dorf. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry, just fixing the video here. All right, we are back in open session. Is there currently a motion on the floor, yeah, point all, of order? Yeah, sorry. Um, all in favor of the motion, please say, I think we approved that, right? No, no, no. I, I mean, is there was there a motion to approve on, there was on the motion floor? motion to approve it. There was. Yes, there, there was. was. Okay, so then I won't make it again. Thank you. So we do have a motion on the floor to approve. Any further discussion in open session? I did have my light lit. All the way. Go ahead. Alder Weary, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I know we had some interesting discussions there in closed session, but it's important to note that if we acquire this, we do have existing to uh, demolish those buildings and clean up the neighborhood, which is a plus for the city and for that neighborhood. Uh, we have existing. I don't go ahead. No, Alder Weary has the floor. We have existing grant money, and this is all public knowledge. We have existing grant money to put in the trail. So we have money ready to go. We've talked about this trail probably as long as I've been on council, uh, at least. I know Alderman Creaser is always real big on continuing this. So I think everything's falling into place here. Um, let's not search for the perfect and, and give up the great. So I think, I think we have a chance here to do something good, and we should seize it. I'm in favor. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm very much in favor of this. Uh, uh, we have been working on this trail a very, very long time. I've been in working with uh, uh, many of the uh, Main Street businesses and with uh, Jeff Merkus. Uh, they are all very concerned about this. They would like us to be moving forward. They're all in favor of this, uh, buying this property now. That uh, East River Trail is going to be significant to the old Main District. It's going to be, they look to it as they see it pretty much the same as uh, what, what the boardwalk did for downtown. Uh, this is very important to them. We're getting a lot more, uh, a few more businesses on Old Main now. They're opening up, uh, and a lot of the businesses on Main are, are expanding their businesses, remodeling, and a lot of everybody's pushing towards outdoors to create an outdoor cafe type atmosphere. Uh, they consider this river trail very important. Uh, I, I understand the uh, financial concerns, but I don't 
I, I can't say that I, I, I'm all that concerned, considering all the grant money involved and all the other monies involved, and we do have the resources. Uh, I think it's time to move forward. I don't think we should be going down now just because of COVID-19. Um, I think that's the wrong message to send the business community uh, and our resident communities that were still involved. We're still going to be fixing up the city. We're still going to be uh, having a positive impact uh, uh, on our city. Uh, I think it's it'd be a mistake to put this on hold and to uh, come back to it and just having to, having to pay more and uh, just putting a, a stop to the momentum that's going, even with COVID-19, these businesses on, on Old Main, they're still going forward. I mean, a lot of them are still uh, working with delivery and takeout and they're still remodeling. Um, uh, they're, everybody's still going forward. We still got to keep going forward. Uh, so I fully support this. Thank you. And I just want to make clear that um, I have heard on this item from a number of business holders and Jeff Merkis, they, they are very concerned about uh, uh, if we didn't go forward with this, they would really like to see this happen. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Vanderleest. Uh, Mayor, can you hear me now? Yes. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Uh, I just wanted to, I, I, for some reason, I was cut out of that closed session. And uh, what are the actual figures that the, the city would be, with the actual finance, can we, can we talk about that? I wasn't in the closed session for whatever reason. I was barred out from it for whatever but what can we talk about those figures or not? Or, or, or aren't we in you know, the words? No, can no, we talk we, about those figures. No, we wouldn't be able to have we, that discussion. Okay, I, I support the project what they're doing there. Uh, I know that uh, it's a big plus for that quarter. I think they're trying to you know where the uh, the clinic was for. I think it's American Foods. They they rerouted their. In other words, we did some trading to make the trail in that area. And uh, I think that, you know, this is going to kind of complete the corridor there, isn't it, as far as what they want to do is with the trail? Is that correct? Director Ditchai, do you want to speak to the design a little bit? Yes, that's, that's correct. So uh, from day one on this project, we proposed to uh, purchase a number of properties along the stretch, and this is one of them. Okay. Hey, I, I support this project. I think that you know, it, it's vital that, you know, they can hook it up. If people are going to ride their bikes or whatever, or walking, I, I think it's, you know, it's a no-brainer. Let's do it. And uh, hopefully we can find the funds. I, I, you know, I didn't hear what all went on on closed session, but I do support this project, so thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Lefebvre. Yes, um, I support the project. Um, I just hope that they can find a way to <clears throat> connect it over um, University Avenue and Webster Street. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat. Uh, I'm I'm having a little concern with the traffic, and I'm sure that they're going to work with that. And oh, I border, can we uh, can we just stay on topic here? And that's, that's something to be addressed down the road. I'm I'm just mentioning those, and I I do concur that I think this is important uh, with all the speakers. So I would vote yes on this. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Nicholson. Thank you, Mayor. I don't think it's a time for this. I think it's too expensive. Um, I'm surprised that Mr. Vanderlees would support this, my colleague, and uh, I concur with Mr. Uh, Burnett. I think it, this is bad timing. It's way too expensive. We're at a crisis. We're bonding for this. We have to fix our roads, and we're not addressing that, but we're addressing... Order. It's not the same money. Do. Thanks, Alder. Any further um, discussion? Mayor, I don't like to be stifled. If I got the floor, be courteous for me, please. Thank you. We've got Alder Stoyer up next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I stated in closed session, I was for this, and I, I still am as well with the grant monies that are out there and some of the other uh, monies that are being brought into the project. I think that uh, this will be a good thing. And the goal of Especially in this city, there's very little in terms of um, you, you look at quality of life issues, and I think trails and waterfront property are two of the quality of life issues that I want to see continue. I'm working on the west side as well to connect our trails out there, and I think this is just another piece of that. I think the fact that you have that lot 
to several lots that you will have development on that will bring assessed value to the city support this project thank you thanks alder alder brunette yes, uh, thank you mayor i just want to know in that it's a tough vote for me because overall i support the trail i'm comfortable with maybe 25 percent of the financial impact of this uh, project and maybe like 75% I'm not too comfortable with. So although it's hard for me to vote against, I'll be voting against just because I, I think the finances aren't lining up the way that I'd like them to line up. Thank you. Alder Dorf. Um, thank you, Mayor. I feel very comfortable voting for this, um, particularly after our discussion in closed session. I, I am in favor of it. It's the, the moment in time seems to be the right moment to move forward. So I will be voting in favor of this. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. All right, we do have a motion before us. Motion by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve this item. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Oppo opposed nay. I want roll call. Okay, roll call has been requested. We'll use the board. Uh, Alder Stevens. You should have it. We got it. Item has been approved 10 to 2. And now we are on to personnel committee. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve report S, which is the report of the personnel committee from the meeting on March 23rd, 2020. Any items under this report to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to T, Economic Development Authority. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report T, which is the report of Economic <laughs> Development Authority from the meeting on March 2nd, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to sustainability. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report U, which is the report of the Sustainability Committee Commission from the meeting on March 11, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Receiving place on file. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Second. Stoyer. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer to uh, receive and place on file. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been received and placed on file. On to ordinances, first and final reading for adoption. Motion to uh, adopt. We we move that agenda Wait. item after X. Right. So next oh, right. That's right. After X. X. Committee of the whole. Oh, yep. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah. Okay. So we are taking up committee of the whole here. Do we need a motion going to closed session on the on the first item, or? Uh, well, Attorney Chavez, why don't you um, comment here? My understanding is we don't actually need closed session here. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Yep. Great. So that is correct. We do not need closed session here um, since the the lawsuit has already been dismissed and we are filing simply as an amicus in the western district there is no pending or threatened litigation um the only uh, only reason we will go into closed session is if we are contemplating a an appeal which i would not be recommending at this time 
Um, one, because we don't necessarily disagree with the judge's decision um, that the Western District is the better place for to have the, the lawsuit determined. Um, and two, the timing of it would not line up with the relief we were asking for, which is strictly an injunction. So with that, um, I would not recommend that we go into closed session at this time. So just a motion to receive and place on file? Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to receive and place on file. Any further discussion? Uh, point of order, Mayor. Uh, just looking for clarification, are we only taking up X1? Correct. So we're gonna take each of these up individually then? Yep. Thank you. Thank I do have a question, uh, Alder Weary. Alder Weary, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm wondering, did we have any outside expenses for this? No. We did We did not hire outside counsel, no. Okay. About how many hours were spent uh, on this in total? Oh, I wouldn't have an estimate on that for you right now. Five? Ten? Twenty? Oh, no. It was easily 40 hours worth of work. So we spent 40 hours worth of work on this item? Now the judge ruled we had no standing. Did we not know that? It, it seemed, I don't know, he made it seem like it was pretty basic. The judge ruled that we do not have standing to sue the government. Our position was that there are extenuating circumstances um, and the judge did not dismiss our, our case outright, uh, which he had every um, opportunity to do instead he waited until um, adequate filings had been made in the Western District and then decided that he was not going to um, consider our arguments on the standing issue. Okay. I, I just wanted noted, you know, gosh, you know, if you talk to people, half praise the city for do it and half ridicule it, you know, as any decision we make. But it's important to note the council had no role in this, correct? I mean, it was for emergency powers to you, Mr. Mayor. So this was all your decision. Uh, I think a lot of people think the council was involved, but we were not. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's, that's important that's that we a, note. Yeah, no, that's a fair point to make. Um, we were able to take action and felt compelled to take action because of the state of emergency that we are under and the, the public health threat that an in-person election represents to our community. Um, but consulted with council, um, you know, made you aware of, of our actions and intentions and the reasoning behind them. But, um, but yes, council did not uh, approve the action. Okay. And, and that's, you know, I don't want to debate whether it was right or wrong. I just wanted that noted. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder. And before we move off this item, there is one thing I do want. So as part of the uh, report that I was going to give on this item um, was when we were going to address the um, amendment of the ordinance that um, you guys moved to after um, Committee of the Whole. So that amendment, my position from a legal standpoint is that in the event of vacancies due to expiration of terms, the city, the, the incumbent will hold that position until the position is filled. The clean thing to do is to adopt an ordinance stating exactly that, so that there is no question, no dispute, should that come up and so that is what the ordinance amendment you were looking at provides. We don't really know what's gonna happen in the district, the Western district cases at this point. They did have a hearing today and the court has declined to rule. Um, and he took everybody's positions under advisement and has, has taken them under advisement, has not ruled on it yet. And so um, we just don't know what's gonna happen come tomorrow or even Tuesday um, and so with the potential that the election could still get postponed, the recommendation would be to adopt the ordinance tonight just to avoid any issues moving forward. Thanks, Attorney Chavez. Alder Nicholson. Thanks, Mayor. I got a question for legal. Why is this, uh, the western part of Wisconsin, a better, uh, you stated, a better place? Why is that? Um, the judge determined that those there was no question of standing in those instances, so he felt like that was a, the better avenue for that to be determined. That was exclusively it. And his name is Conley? The, the judge in that current case is Conley, yes. Okay. Do you know what political party he uh, 
the first two or belongs to order, that doesn't matter. Alder Nicholson, he's a, he's a federal judge. They don't have party yeah, identification. Parties. Well, they do before they uh, become federal judges. I was just curious. That's all. I'm just yeah. asking. Well, it's not it's not uh, part Alder, of our business. Alder Scannell. It's not part of Alder, business. Alder Point Scannell. Of it's got Alder, nothing to do with our business. Alder Scannell, you don't have to do it sometimes else, not during <laughs> Alder, <laughs> Alder Scannell. Even at home, Randy. Point um, of order. Alder I Scannell. I can call a point of order. Alder Scannell. Yes. You do not have the floor. I can call a point of order at any it, time. It, it's not well taken. Oh, you just like saying point of order, Randy. Let's face it. Thank you, Mayor. Alder Scandal, you have the floor now. Uh, Attorney Chavez, uh, so this lawsuit is going on, so the 40 hours you have spent on this has not been wasted. Point of order, Mayor. That's not a point of order. He should know rules of... Alder Scandal has order. the floor, Alder yep. Nicholson. <laughs> Uh, so my question to Attorney Javis, uh, Chavez is still on the floor. It is. No, none, none of the, the time that we spent has been wasted. Um, we filed in Mekis in the Western District, um, and a lot of what we had prepared in the suit that we filed in the Eastern District was is use that. So um, it allowed us to do that one in a much more expedient fashion because we'd already done all the research and gathered all the information and done all that information gathering for it. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder Weary. Apologies. I just turned it off. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alder Vanderlees would like to speak. Go ahead. Oh, um, uh, from, from what the uh, governor has spoken, uh, he pretty much wants the election to go forward. I think that there's been a lot of dollars spent as far as what's taken place, and there are a lot of absentee ballots that are, you know, being being filed. And I, I think, you know, his his uh, his response is that he'd like to see the election go forward, and I, I support the election going forward as as is. And uh, I, I don't think a lawsuit is really necessary. Uh, to try to stop it. I, I think we have to take the leadership role the governor's taken and, and uh, you know, do the best we can. And, and people that, you know, don't get their absentees in time, they'll have to get out to the polls if they can. And I want to mention that over at the, the bus terminal there at 902, uh, I think it's a very safe operation. They have glass up and, uh, you know, they don't let a lot of people in there if you want to vote. I voted there today. So I, I support the election going forward personally and uh, I think a lot of people do as well thanks Alder any further Thank discussion you. so as was discussed I think the appropriate motion is to receive and place on file that motion was made by Alder Scannell is there a second second that was Galvin yes Galvin All right, motion made by Scannell seconded by Alder Galvin all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay the ayes have it. On to item two. Consideration with possible action to amend personnel policy chapter 23 family and medical leave to include the eligible leave benefits under the Family First Coronavirus Response Act and Emergency First Motion Responder Sick Leave. Second. Motion made to approve by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Uh, Director Falds. Yeah, I can go over the, the policy um, generally. So there was new federal legislation that was passed and that it goes into effect today. And there's two provisions. Um, one is called the Emergency, Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act and the other is the Emergency Family Medical Leave Expansion Act. <clears throat> so there are six things that need to occur to qualify for this leave. Um, the first one is you have to be subject to a federal, state, or local quarantine or isolation related to COVID-19. Uh, you have to be advised by a healthcare provider to self-quarantine due to COVID-19. You have to be experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 or seeking a medical diagnosis. Um, also, if you are caring for an individual who is quarantined due to COVID-19, um, in addition, if you are caring for a son or daughter whose school or childcare is closed due to COVID-19. And then the last one is if you're experiencing any substantially similar conditions specified by the Secretary of Health, and human service in consultation with the Secretary of Treasury and Secretary of Labor. 
No one really knows what that mean, <laughs> means at this point, but I'm sure we'll figure it out when it comes, if it ever happens. So for those six leaves, you are eligible up to 80 hours of leave time. And if you are off because you are self-quarantined, you're eligible to receive full pay up to $511 per day, capped at $5,110 over two weeks. For the other reasons, you'd be paid at two-thirds of your regular rate for two weeks, which is $200 per day and capped at $2,000 for two weeks. Then the Emergency Family Medical Leave Expansion Act allows for 10 additional weeks for child care um, for your son or daughter. Um, and this, again, is paid at two-thirds of your regular rate, up to $200 per day and 12000 in the aggregate of 12 weeks. So the federal <clears throat> legislation allows for the, the city and any employer to exclude uh, police and firefighters, which are considered emergency first responders. So we didn't feel like that was the best course of action. So what we did was we created a benefit for the police and firefighters that they could <clears throat> have this type of sick leave. So what the benefit for those police and fire union members is that we're going to allow up to two weeks of paid sick leave for employees that may be experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 or advised by a healthcare provider to self-quarantine due to COVID-19. And then also we're going to allow for four weeks of child care for firefighters or police officers. And this is at the discretion of the fire and police chief based on the circumstances and of request and also, also to ensure adequate staffing to serve the public. So that's the policy um, generally. If anyone has any questions, I can answer them. Thanks, Director. Any questions for Director Fault? So we do have a motion before us in a second. I'm sorry, Mayor. I don't. I couldn't turn my light on quick enough. Yeah, go ahead, Alder Brunette. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Director Faults, what are other municipalities doing? Maybe those of our size or those local. Mm -hmm. So there was just a, a survey that went, that went out asking if, um, oh, excuse me, and I guess I'll back up. So for the leave for our general employees outside of, outside of emergency first responders, we have to abide by that because it's federal law. So we have to do that. So if you're asking what we're doing for emergency first responders and what other municipalities are doing, um, I don't have the survey data yet. There's been surveys that have been sent out, but the information hasn't been collected. Um, I'm not aware of too many municipalities <laughs> that have given childcare leave uh, for um, police officers and firefighters, but for the most part, I think they have allowed um, paid sick leave for people experiencing COVID-19 symptoms. That's what I've heard so far. <clears throat> and, um, either for Director Falls or Diana, Director Ellen Becker, have we looked at, it's sensitive because obviously I, I, people are impacted as am I by this. Have we looked, started looking at the financial impact of a prolonged corona issue? Like that this uh, emergency first responders and benefits and sick time and whatnot, are we, are we kind of having the just conversations that if this continues for another month, two months, three months, what are we gonna do at that point? Uh, I can start with that. Um, so I, I guess my first response to that is that the legislative, legislative um, act just got passed, I mean, last week and it's in effect today. Um, so the leave is up to um, two weeks if you're experiencing COVID-19 symptoms. And then the leave is up to 12 weeks um, paid at, and, um, the total amount can't exceed 12,000. And then when we look at the benefit that was given to police and fire, that is that only runs until June 15th. And then this council can amend it or um, continue it at that time. But I guess I haven't ran the numbers with uh, the finance department or director Ellen Becker to see what the impact would be if this um, continues or what this impact would be for the 12 weeks for our employees. Uh, Marcus, is Matt uh, Alder Brunette. Uh, I'm fine. I was distracted by someone's call. I'm, I'm at Matt. I'm, I'm done. I got your message. I'm at a city council meeting right now, so I can't <laughs> talk. But we'll, thank you. we'll mute everybody okay. here.
Alder Brunette. Yeah, okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Falds, and uh, everyone in city staff. I know we've really, uh, thank you. Times and information is coming in, state, federal, all these different things. And so obviously I'm concerned about our workforce and families and health is a priority, but I'm just thinking like ahead to the financial implications. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I would like to just put in there that this is mandated by the federal government that we provide this leave. So it's, we should look at the impact, but I don't have the numbers at this point. Thanks, Alder. Alder Nicholson. Thanks, Mayor. A uh, question for Joel. Um, Joel, um, have any city employees tested positive for the coronavirus? You know of? Well, I, I'm, <laughs> I know there's um, HIPAA procedures and there's uh, certain information we can um, release um, during a pandemic. And I know Chief Linton has sent that information to me. I guess at this point, I, I'm just going to err on the side of not releasing whether or not an employee has been diagnosed with COVID-19 or any symptoms related to COVID-19. And if Chief Linton, if you want to correct me, if I should, let me know. But at this point, I'm not going to release it. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate it. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mayor. Thank you. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Director Falls, thank you for that overview. Just a couple questions. One is um, specifically related to staff getting paid when they self-quarantine. And I understand that's, you know, following the federal guidelines. This is more of a, a clarification point. Um, who determines when an individual must self-quarantine? Yeah, so the what the regulations state is healthcare provider would um, make that determination. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make sure, I guess, that there was a, a protocol or a process in place or something like that. Sounds like it's already addressed in the legislation. Um, the second thing is um, understanding, you know, that, that it sounds like the child care kind of goes above and beyond what's required by federal legislation. If there are costs, to Alder Burnett's point, if there are costs that the city incurs, my understanding, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, is that the federal government will reimburse us for those things that they mandate. If child care is not mandated, is that eligible for reimbursement? So to answer that question, um, the, the federal government, as it is right now, will reimburse private employers that qualify for this leave for these, um, for paying this type of paid sick leave or child care leave. Uh, right now, um, government agencies are not going to be reimbursed. I'm not sure if that's going to change or not. And when we talk about the child care leave, for everyone outside of emergency first responders, that is required. That is not above and beyond what the federal law is asking for. When we ask, when we allow for police and fire to have child care up to four weeks, that is above and beyond what the federal law has asked. Okay, and I don't think anybody would, would argue that we shouldn't provide that, particularly you know with, with added hours and, and, and stresses related to this. I'm just thinking forward again about the financial impact and where that money is gonna come from and whether or not federal government reimbursement is an option and it hasn't been figured out yet. So we'll just kind of sit in a holding pattern. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to share a little information I had on the call today because it relates directly to this. They There was consideration um, under the CARES Act on reimbursing uh, local and counties. And the thing where this, a city had to be 500,000 or the threshold for local governments was 500,000 people. Um, now after listening, was that is under reconsideration for smaller cities and smaller cities may be able to get funds. I don't know if anyone else knows this, or knows about this, but it was just said at kind of the end of, of this call that I was on today. But there's quite a bit of money um, to, that can be distributed they will not have, uh, you will not need to develop 
detailed implementation plans, and it should be used to offset the cost of COVID-19. It will not be examined on the front end, but it will be examined on the back end so that cities and counties are not trying to um, get money for other things. So that it looks like there's some hope at least for us to be getting some more money um, after I listen to that. Um, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any further discussion? All right, we do have a motion on the floor for approval. Motion was made by Alder Scandal, seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The item is approved. Round to item three, informational report and update by Chief David Litton regarding emergency operations and COVID-19 response. Chief. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Very good. So good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Um, I'm just going to give you a very brief update. I'll just uh, let you know uh, before I get started that I did send uh, my comments to all the alders via email. So it should be in your district email. There are several links in there um, that when I get to them, you'll be able to uh, share with your constituents um, regarding some things that might be important to them. So I just remind everybody again that the Brown he County Health Department uh, is the lead agency uh, in handling this pandemic. So Brown County Health Department, um, they are the lead and uh, all of our city resources are basically supporting their effort. Um, the father, there's a, there, there are several um, things going on in the emergency operations center, um, communications, a firefighting wing, emergency management, mass care, resource support, which basically is logistics, uh, the public safety and security sector, long-term recovery, uh, and external affairs are all emergency support functions that have been activated. They're, they're uh, working daily from eight to five at the emergency operations center and then on the weekends and at night, we're doing what's called a virtual monitoring of, of the uh, activities out there and we can come together very quickly via Zoom and or uh, going directly to the emergency operations center uh, should circumstances require it. Um, the county has established a central resource location where all the personnel pr uh, protective equipment is being received, inventoried, and distributed. Um, we have received two shipments from the strategic national stockpile, so that's good news. A week ago, we couldn't say that. Um, we, we do have, we have been getting those resources. They are coming in in several different ways. It is a little bit disjointed come from the state. Uh, unfortunately, they have some things. Uh, in fact, there will be a distribution tomorrow uh, for uh, the, the city and county clerks for the uh, voting uh, materials. Um, that's going to one place and then the other stockpile is going to another location, which uh, is kind of counterintuitive, but it's a system that we're working with and we, we are trying to get that kind of more streamlined at the state level, but that's a work in progress. Um, I will tell you that we, you know, we have been successful in acquiring more personal protective equipment for all of our personnel. Um, and we're definitely in a much better position than we were in a, la a week ago. So uh, while we don't have as much as we need, uh, should this thing get really bad, um, I'm certainly feeling a lot better about where we're at um, going forward. Um, point four is a pretty important point. Um, the state has established a network of child care facilities throughout the state for those employees that are deemed as being essential. So obviously, uh, um, you know, police, fire, public works, some of the frontline folks that have been deemed essential, but there are many uh, members of our community uh, working at various um, occupations throughout the city that would fall into this category. And so when you open your email, I've provided a link um, to the uh, state website, which gives you give, will give the citizens uh, directions on how they can locate those child care facilities. As of this morning, there were 17,000 um, child care positions um, that were open. So um, for those that are seeking child care so that they can continue to work, um, that's definitely a, a website that uh, you might want to bring up uh, for them. Um, and again, I can we can put that out on our website uh, tomorrow. It's been one quarantine isolation site's been established in the county, and and the health department is working on setting up several more. I think the second site has is coming online uh, tonight. As a matter of fact, um, I'll remind everybody that the surge models that are being used are showing that the greatest impact of this is going to happen in about a week and a half to two weeks. <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's impossible to predict exactly when, but that's what the models are saying at this point. Um, the, the state has provided guidance to the clerk's office on the upcoming election on April 7th. Um, 
we're working with the clerk's office. Um, we'll be picking up their supplies. So the, the state has supplied, uh, and we don't know how much yet, but some hand sanitizer and spray disinfectant to the uh, polling places. Uh, we'll be working with uh, the county tomorrow. We've, we've offered from the fire department standpoint to go and pick up that stockpile. We'll get it back to the county. Then we'll make the distribution right to our city right from there, uh, as well as the village of Alloway since we serve them on, on the fire side. Uh, of note, um, they are not providing any personal protective equipment for uh, the polling workers. And so we are working with Chris Desky on that. Uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to pull from our, <coughs> excuse me, our stockpile and our supplies uh, within the city uh, so that they can have some proper equipment for that. So we'll be working on that tomorrow and Friday and we'll hopefully we'll have that resolved before the election on Tuesday. Um, the testing for the virus is still very, very limited. Um, the state has established a four tier system for people that, that uh, might have be having the symptoms. Um, the first responders are in tier two. Uh, and we've had success. We have had to have a, a couple of uh, people tested. I do not have the results back, nor would I share those with you when we do get them back, but um, just understand that if we do need to get any of our personnel tested, we are able to uh, kind of move them to the front of the line. We still have two fire department personnel. I reported uh, two weeks ago that we had 14 people that were quarantined. We are now down to two. I think both of those are going to be released by the end of the week. Um, their symptoms have uh, resolve themselves, but we have to wait by the CDC guidelines 72 hours after their last symptoms. Uh, and so we're working towards that. Um, of note, um, our ambulances have, have transported 45 patients in the last two weeks that fit all three of the criteria um, for having the symptoms of coronavirus. Um, and, I, and I make that point to tell you that um, at the time that we're having, that our paramedics are having that contact with the patients, uh, they don't know. And we don't know sometimes for a week, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 days before we actually get test results back through the system. So um, as we get those results, we are certainly, um, we're having our, our, our personnel, both police and fire, um, you know, they're, they're kind of just doing a self check to make sure that if they come up with any of the symptoms uh, that they report them immediately and then we immediately put them into quarantine. Um, just because if we have a major breakout in any of our fire stations or in the police ranks, uh, you could wipe out half of our departments in, a, in no time with a quarantine and isolation. So that's the, the important part of you know, all of this is, is making sure that we don't, that we have the emergency personnel available to uh, respond to all the calls. Um, we're, we are continuing to the point that was being made about uh, expenses. We are continuing to track our expen expenses related to the purchase of, of equipment and supplies, as well as the personnel time in dealing with this pandemic. The federal government will reimburse up to 75% of these costs. So. We know most of what um, they're allowing is as far as reimbursement at this point, and that's subject to change. I think there's gonna be a fourth bill coming forward. I think you've all been seeing the news on that. And so some of that may be uh, changing as well. We're making our input heard at the uh, state level uh, through the county EOC. So uh, hopefully that'll be coming forward again. On the email I sent to you, there's several links there that kind of will give you a little bit of um, uh, direction on what what is and what's not eligible and if you have any specific questions shoot me an email and I'll try to we'll try to get you to answer on that stuff uh, as it comes along the last thing I wanted to mention uh, was that the uh, Department of Public Works uh, the Department of Community Development and the Police Department they're working on a plan for the distribution of sandbags I want to thank those three departments they really st stepped up um, that we've required from the county so we have about 10,000 sandbags that are uh, that are located in one of the city facilities and what's gonna happen with that is uh, shortly, there'll be a mailing going out to those folks uh, that are in the floodway, which are the people that are the most impacted on the East River, and followed by the floodplain. And then if there are any bags left after that, then it would go out to other areas of the city that are less prone to be flooded. But we know that the East River, we know the area that's gonna flood, we have a map, we have the addresses. And so that thing will be going forward to them. There'll be a mailing that's being sent out from community development on that. We'll follow that up with a code red message through the county and so that we can uh, get those details uh, worked out. We do not have all of these specifics in place at this point, so I can't answer specific questions, but we have, hope to have that worked out by first part of next week. Um, I will just say that overall, I believe that the county, city, and other municipalities are working well together um, to share resources and to ensure that the citizens of the region receive the finest services possible. I will also say that our county is, in my estimation, way ahead of many or most of the rest of them in the state. Uh, we started uh, in the in the county. Uh, we started pushing probably 17 or 18 days ago. 
uh, to get moving with getting the EOC open. And I will tell you, there are many counties in the state that still do not have their emergency operations center open. So they are gonna be behind the eight ball when we get into the middle of all this. So with that, I take any questions if you have any. Thanks so much, Chief, again, for all of your work on this. And, and thanks to <clears throat> all the first responders and public safety officers in the city of Green Bay. Um, we're very lucky to be served by an incredible group of uh, men and women that um, are willing to put their lives on the line for the greater good of the community. So please extend that um, to, to uh, all, of, all of your employees. Um, Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a few questions, Chief. And uh, um, first off, sandbags. Um, I did have a discussion with uh, Steve Grenier this week, but I do have a constituent problem that already uh, ordered sandbags. I'm sorry, uh, Alder Galvin, you broke up a little bit there at the end. I didn't, did not hear your full question. We will move along to Alder Brunette and then come back to Alder Galvin. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Chief, and also Chief Smith. I know you both are very involved with this, and I appreciate it. Uh, Chief Litton, you mentioned that other counties are not quite at the place that our county is. Is there any discussion about how, because we're so far ahead, that we would lend our resources and staff to other counties if the outbreak there is worse than here? I mean, is there any of those discussions? Um, I would tell you that uh, there have been no discussions on that. There are contingency plans to move personnel um, within our county, both on the police side of things and on the fire side of things. The police, I know, are, are having a daily count of officers that are available in the entire county so that they have a contingency in case they have a major breakout in any specific a department that they'll be able to provide service still throughout the county. So I know that maybe Chief Smith will probably talk to that a little bit more and we're doing the same exact thing in the fire side. But as far as is uh, sending, uh, you know, healthcare workers or any other people out to other areas of the state at this point, um, as I said, I think that the, uh, the major brunt of this is coming. Um, I will just tell you that the deaths in the state uh, went up by 50% overnight. So not that they're a great deal amount right now, but we went from 16 yesterday to 24 today, 50% increase. So if that starts, if that keeps going exponentially, um, you know, it's going to get get worse before it gets better. I'm good. Thanks, Thanks Chief. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, and Chief Litton, I apologize. Uh, maybe my phone was telling me this meeting is going on too long or something. I don't know. Or maybe it didn't like my question, but... Um, sandbags. I have four constituents that took a delivery of sandbags from DPW. Uh, they were under the impression that the uh, sandbags were going to be um, free. Uh, they were given a bill. I did talk to uh, Steve Grenier, told me to just uh, hang on, uh, that there was something uh, coming down the pipe from the EOC. And um, I guess I'm wondering if these 10,000 sandbags you're talking about that are available, are those going to be free? or are these uh, are the constituents going to be responsible for paying for them? I think the mayor might have made a, uh, gave us some direction on that yesterday. Mayor, do you want to answer the question or did you want me to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the thought would be for us to use um, contingency funds for that purpose, um, but would want, uh, you know, council to weigh into that decision. Okay, um, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and this is for uh, either Chief Linton or, or Chief Smith. Um, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on social media about non-essential businesses in Green Bay that are open for business. And I was told today that the police actually did take action on one business on the far east side uh, in East Town Mall. Um, some people are becoming very frustrated. They're trying to be good about keeping the social distance and they went see, they see some of these establishments are open and it becomes very frustrating for them um, when they see that these businesses and individuals are putting everyone else at risk in our community. I'm just wondering how um, stringent are we being in seeking out these businesses and individuals and uh, making them close uh, their doors if they're not deemed essential? 
Uh, Alder Galvin, this is a problem that is huge across the state of Wisconsin. I probably 50 emails, no exaggeration a day from chiefs across the country or across the state looking for guidance on this. We've been relying heavily on leaning on the city attorney's office. There's some that are clearly um, out there and in violation. Others like Coles have made special arrangements with the state so that they can uh, do drive up, uh, fill your trunk up with things that you ordered online ordering. So we're gonna have to take it on a case by case basis. It's really frustrating for our guys because the guidelines are not that clear when it comes to a, say a head shop that also sells, you know, I don't know, potato chips and some other stuff here. And the guy wants to put up an argument that he should be allowed to, to uh, uh, maintain his business. And we're getting information that says no head shops don't really qualify. So very frustrating for us working on a case by case basis and leaning heavily on the city attorney's office for some interpretation. All right, thank you. And, and uh, I will uh, echo the words of the mayor and his thanks to uh, all our uh, city employees and uh, all they're doing for us in this community keep us safe thank you thanks sir thanks alder thanks chief any additional questions alder dorf thank you i just would like to say once again thank you to, to both chiefs and i will ask again what do you need from us is there is there more that we can do to help you feel supported and to help you, the people that are working, the heroes that are working with you feel supported. I'll just, Chief, you wanna go first, go ahead. Sure, um, from my perspective, uh, passing the ordinance that, uh, you, or the, the um, resolution that you guys just passed, I think goes a long way. I think the officers do feel like they're being supported. We're getting a lot of really good support from the community. Um, certainly from the, uh, the elected leaders here in our city have been doing a great job. Um, I think we're doing good. There's some things like uh, I'm trying to get some more uh, uh, masks, some of the more uh, the mat filtration masks. Um, we're working on that. They're a little bit pricey. We may end up having to come at you and ask for some money for some of those things of that nature, which, we'll, which I won't be shy to do. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would just echo that. Uh, what Chief Smith said. I think that uh, you know, passing the the uh, resolution that you passed tonight goes a long way towards sending a message to all the first responders out there. I, you know, I want to just uh, also say that every single department in the city has been working really hard, working really good together. Uh, it's not about just police and fire. I mean, everybody from HR to the, the legal office to uh, DPW. I mean, everybody. Um, parks they're all helping us uh, in, in any way and anywhere that they can so it has been a, a really great um, team effort and, and much appreciated thanks to all thank you so much that's all I have thanks Alder okay we don't need any action on this item so we're gonna move ahead to item four and thanks again chief for that report uh, item four discussion with possible action on the resolution to amend liquor license renewal fees for 2020-2021. Second. 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 Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens, I believe. Correct. Uh, and this this was something that I touched on at the front of the meeting under the mayor's report. Um, you know, what we're attempting to do here, um, implementing here is a, is a reduction to the statutory minimum um, for Class B liquor license holders um, for, for beer and wine and uh and in spirits distilled spirits so uh kind of touched on the rationale behind that um but would invite any discussion from from alders on this our law department is uh is on the line as well if we have specific questions alder johnson thank you mayor I, it, this is these are the exact same licenses that we react uh for raising the fees yeah, so these are not all of our license holders in the city, and again, would invite the law department to, to weigh in here, but these were the license holders that we identified as those businesses who were directly impacted by the health orders that have been um, passed down from the state government that have forced them to close or radically alter their business model. Okay, so we basically went through the whole list of license holders, and we just kind of... Uh, more of a manual process, I guess. I mean, to kind of pick those that are that, that were most significantly impacted. So it's the Class B 
holders, um, which is basically bars and restaurants, is my understanding. But law department, please weigh in if if we need clarification. Good evening, Alders. This is Joanne Bungert from the law department. Um, so yes, because the um, emergency orders specifically impact um, restaurants and bars and have reduced them down to um, very limited operations, uh, we felt that um, they would be most significantly um, burdened financially um, with their limited operations and felt that um, reducing the fees for them would be the most beneficial. So it's not specific businesses, but all um, establishments that hold a class B, which essentially are restaurants and bars that have on-premise consumption. Okay, and do we, do we, do we have a, a, a quantity? I mean, a number of businesses that this would affect? Um, I do not offhand have the number of class B licenses. Okay, and so I assume if we don't have the number, does that mean that we also don't do, do I mean, do you know like what the fiscal impact of this is? The fiscal impact? No, I, I'm not sure. I know we were in discussions with um, the finance department as to what budgetary impacts that would have. Um, so I'm not sure if Diana would have those numbers at this point or at this time. Yes, this is Diana. This is Director Ellen Becker. Um, we did run some um, scenarios on how many um, bars or restaurants that this did affect. Um, last year, we used 2019 actuals as the basis. We had about 270 um, operations that got licenses. Our 2020 budget is 120,000. We do believe that this could be a reduction of, of about a hundred thousand, or anywhere between ninety to a hundred thousand dollars in revenue. If we, if all of them went down to the statutory minimums, but that is um, noted in the resolution. Uh, just a point of clarification, Director Ellen Becker, um, wasn't that original analysis done? If we were to take the statute or you know implement statutory minimums for all licensed establishments. Correct, that's class A and class B. Right. So so here we're just um, addressing class B license holders. So we don't have that number in front of us, but obviously it would be less than if you were to go to the statutory minimums for, for all license holders. Uh, it, is this subject to reimbursement from either the federal or the state government? the loss of this revenue? <clears throat> yeah, so that's an open question, something that we were talking about with Chief Linton and Director Ellen Becker, whether or not loss of revenue is potentially eligible for reimbursement. We don't have a hard answer on that yet. Okay. Is there uh, a time sensitivity to pass this? And the reason I ask is because um, obviously without these numbers, I mean, I feel like I'm making an uninformed decision. So just curious, I, I know that the renewals are going out soon, but just looking for some feedback from your perspective. Yeah, so that that is the time sensitivity. So April 15th is when um, renewals need to be uh, sent in by. Okay, so 100,000 roughly was the number that was tossed out with both license categories, but we don't know what the amount is for just the one category. Is that correct? That's, yeah, that's my understanding. Correct. Okay. And, and where, I guess, where do we anticipate getting the funding? Will we just go to the general fund for that? Yeah. So this would could be a potentially a contingency fund expense. Um, and certainly, you know, very valid questions. Um, but for us to move forward, requiring full fee payment um, on businesses that are either shuttered or again radically altering their business model seems to be pretty tone deaf so i would just encourage folks to think about the impact of you know relatively small dollar amount right we're talking about a few hundred dollars um but when businesses are shuttered they're unable to meet payroll for the city to come in and um you know assess a sizable fee on them seems to be a little bit out of step with the times Okay, and then, I mean, as a council, should we anticipate that there will be other fee waivers that are gonna come before us? 
nothing that we've identified to this point, but I wouldn't rule any of that out. Are there, and again, I understand that there is more clarification likely coming from the federal government. I mean, I'm just trying to wrap my brain, you know, around the, wrap my arms around the, the fiscal impact to the city and, and how we finance these types of things. Um, I mean, any indication on your end uh, of, of, I mean, other than going to the general fund, which my understanding is already not in a great place. Uh, any other indication of where we might be able to go to recover some of this? Not or this. would you perhaps propose cuts somewhere else in our budget? Not for this specific expense or reduction in revenue, rather. Okay, thank you. Alder Nicholson. Thanks, Mayor. So with this issue, we're, we're basically sustaining the original fees. Is that what this is all about? No, this takes the, the fee down to the statutory minimum under what the state of Wisconsin requires of municipalities for Class B liquor license holders. So what is what is that dollar amount then for a license then? Was it four hundred dollars then, or it was going to be four hundred? Now it's fifty for one, and uh, we're able to take it to zero for the other. Okay, you answered my question. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Alder Dorf. Thank you. You know, I just I think that private small businesses, individuals, cities, every one of us is going to be impacted by the crisis that we're in. Every one of us is going to have to, to figure out how to pay the bills. And um, it seemed that last time we talked about this, there was a lot of support for, for these small businesses. And there was a lot of discussion about not raising it. In the end, we had decided to raise it. It was a split vote, if I remember correctly. But I'm certainly, certainly in favor of helping these small businesses, these restaurants, these bars to just save them whatever little bit of money we can and to figure it out. We're a city, we can figure this out. So um, I'm all in support of doing this when we get to that resolution, which will be coming up. Thank you. Thanks, Alder Dorf. Alder Scannell. No. Uh, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Just one other question. I, I want to be clear, too. My, my line of questioning isn't intended to call into question whether or not this is a good decision. It's really just to gather appropriate information that I, I feel is somewhat lacking right now. And so I'm just trying to explore options. Um, and, and one of the one other question I guess I would have is, is there... A I understand the timing of sending out renewals, but is there a reason that we have to make this decision today to forgo the fee versus doing a 90-day deferral? Would that be an option? And by deferral, meaning that we'll delay the sending of renewals by 90 days just so that we have some additional time to explore the fiscal impact and how we're going to address that? Yeah, I believe there's some statutory requirements about the timeline, but Attorney Bungert? Yes, so under the statutes, there would be a difficulty in delaying um, for 90 days and sending out the renewal simply because under the statutes, if a license holder files their, um, their uh, renewal application by April 15th, we then have a statutory obligation to make a decision on that renewal uh, before the expiration of the current term. So then that would put um, a bit of pressure on, um, on committee and council to get those applications turned around in time, to get background checks done, to get inspections done, to get all the other processes uh, fulfilled in order to uh, renew that application. Because again, if the license holder does file their application by April 15th, they are guaranteed a decision um, before uh, June 30th. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'm uh, in full support of this measure. Uh, I, 
I don't think we're in an emergency situation. People are, are hurting. They're looking for assistance from uh, their government. Every local, I mean, every uh, part of their government, uh, local, uh, county, state, fed, uh, I think we can do our part and help out as much as we can. These local businesses, uh, I think, are going to appreciate I think we're sending a positive message to the businesses, to our community. We're there for them. I think uh, we will figure this out later on what we're going to do with our budget. Our budget isn't the priority right now. It's helping people out. This is an emergency and we need to act up now. So I fully support this. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks, Alder. Alder Brunette. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Make sure I'm off mute. Uh, thank you. It's a hard decision because my heart obviously says don't charge the charge the minimum because of the restaurants are struggling and the workers are struggling and what I get Alder Johnson getting at is what I've been kind of getting at is that long term three months six months a year from now what's what is our what sorts of cuts are we going to make in order to make our budget work what will happen and I'm just like anyone else in the city um for folks who are set to make their half of their property tax payment in July and perhaps are laid off or reduced hours or perhaps some of those folks paying their property taxes are also car owners, you know, how, how are we going to allow deferment of payments for property taxes? And of course, the tax levy is how we fund a lot of our city operations. So we need to start having these discussions. And I get, I, I, I agree with you completely, Mayor, that the decision not to do this would be tone deaf given the situation that we're in but I also do think we need to think of the financial implications on things that we could perhaps cut from our city budget and everything is tight we know that uh, it, our city is in a financial position that we're trying to improve but inevitably if you reduce revenue to your city of a hundred thousand dollars there has to be a offsetting cut somewhere and those are the sorts of decisions we're gonna have to make so it's a tough vote. It really is because my heart says, yes, reduce it. But my head says it does have a financial impact that, that we need to discuss it. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Stoyer. <laughs> Alder Stoyer. But I think in the, in, the, in the short in the short term, uh, I feel that this is this is good. I'm, I'm looking. You know, we'll have those discussions in the in the upcoming months. But I feel that this will help the small business owners, and uh, I'm in favor. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good discussion about this, and I, I think everyone's making a, a good points. I think we have to remind ourselves that, uh, you know, during World War II and, and other catastrophes that have hit this country in the past, and sometimes you, while you still have to keep your eye on your dollars, you have to set aside some of those decisions and do what's good for everybody, for the greater good. And, and I was one of the ones leading the charge to raise those fees, but in these times, I think we also have to take the, the long bowl look and we have to ask ourselves if these businesses go out of business and long enough that they can't get back in business, will that have more harm to us than if we have some budget difficulties for the next year or so because we were able to help some of these businesses recover, stay open or recover sooner and get back on their feet. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to more discussions on this in the future, but I do support uh, reducing the fees for these businesses at this time. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Lefebvre. Um, I concur with um, Alder Galvin. Um, I believe that we don't know what the future is going to be. This is all new for all of us, and I think we're trying to do the best that we can. And I do believe we do need to help wherever we can our uh, businesses to stay in business, however we can do it. And I think what we have to realize, we have to do the step, and what comes up next, we're just going to have to deal with it as it comes. And I do agree, yes, this is going to be a hit to our, um, to our finances, 
but I think that we can work together and we can come up to come up with what we need. And so I just think um, that we should go ahead and pass this. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any further discussion? Alder Vanderlees would like to speak. Go ahead. Uh, Mayor, my, my thoughts are that we reduced it, you know, from the, the high figure. I'd make a motion that we, in other words, we had it at $400. I'd make a motion that we keep it at $200, that we move it to $200 and keep it in effect. Uh, you know, if we look at the long term as far as, you know, our uh, we're not going to want to be looking to raise our property taxes come uh, next our next budget term. So we're going to have to look at some of those things as well. Uh, I don't think people are going to want a tax increase in, uh, I feel that you know if we're cutting this fee from four hundred dollars to two hundred dollars, I don't think that's too bad of a fee. Uh, you know, we'd be cutting it in half from what we originally proposed. I, I think that'd be a pretty fair proposal. That would be my motion to cut it from four hundred to two hundred dollars. And and I, I think that there's going to be some help from the federal government for some of the businesses that uh, you know they'll be able to re, you know keep things going and uh, the city green things going as well. And uh, I think we're going to have to look at, you know, how we're going to handle our property taxes on, on the next budget. And, and we're not going to want to increase them because things aren't that good. So I, I'd say if we cut this in half, we'd be doing a pretty fair gesture. Thank you. That would be my motion to cut it to $200 instead of 4 Okay, so the Alder um, has proposed <clears throat> an amendment here that would... Um put the fee for um, for these licenses at two hundred dollars is there a second I'll second that is that Alder Brunette yes, yes thank you okay um, I, I still um, believe we should stick with the original motion um, you know as I said really charging we are required to charge a statutory minimum of fifty dollars on on one of the categories um, but my preference would be to charge people nothing during this time um, you know having assessing a liquor license fee on an establishment that isn't able to sell liquor um, seems a little counterintuitive but we do have an amendment uh, which has a second um, do we use the board mayor yes we can use the board your honor I, I mean I put my light on to speak it's not lit currently Oh, it's not on. Ah. No. Your Honor, I... Uh. And we do have a roll call on going here. Yeah. This is on Vanderlee's motion? Yes, this is on the amendment. Oh. Oh, I'm, I, oh, sorry, I voted wrong. <laughs> okay, how, how would you like to vote, Alder Lefebvre? I would like to vote, if this is Van, uh, Alder Vanderlees's motion, Correct. I would like to vote no. Okay, noted. Uh, Alder Brunette? I voted yes. It, vote yes. So that amendment fails eight to four. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, so we're back to the original resolution here. This is Alder Corpus Dax. I have my light to speak. Go ahead. Um, just a quick question here. Um, aren't we saving money uh, since we're not allowing any travel at the moment so could some of those travel dollars from various departments be moved over to help cover the fees that's yeah, a good question director Ellen Becker any insight there um, yes that is correct there is a very good chance that there is some savings on travel um, you know if it's the will of the council that we could certainly move those dollars over. I think there's a good chance that other departments may be looking to maybe redirect those dollars to some other expense within their their um, division, but um, there probably is a few dollars savings 
um, again, very, you know, we start with our travel budgets are very limited to start with. Right. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Alder Stoyer. Paul, I'm, I'm out. Okay. Thanks, Alder. So we do have uh, a motion and a second on the original item here. All in favor will signify. Actually, given the nature of the debate and the split vote on the amendment, we're going to use the board on this too. Alder Brunette. I vote yes. I voted. It's just not working, apparently. Sure. No problem. Yes. Okay, it is uh, unanimous. 12 0. <laughs> now on to item five discussion with possible action on resolution uh, providing for employee benefits in accordance with state and federal law. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve. Uh, Director Fald's comments here. Yeah, so this is a resolution to um, amend the proclamation declaring state of emergency. Um, what it's asking is to implement the personnel policy that we just approved, and then also to allow for the city to continue to pay for employees who might have reduced work um, through April 17th. Uh, at this point, um, I've not heard a lot from department heads that there is not enough work um, through April 17th. So at that point, that, and that's a good thing at this point. Um, so we're going to assess and see if there are, if there is a need for layoffs. I hope there isn't, um, but this will give us enough time to look at options to um, either go with layoffs or not go with them. Also to look at options for employees to look for unemployment and then also figure out how they can say it on our insurance if they are laid off. Thanks, Director. Any questions? All right. Seeing no speakers, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and the item has been approved. Now we are back to ordinances first reading, <clears throat> first and final reading for adoption. Uh, point of order, Mayor. Unless I missed it, did we skip item six? Oh, yeah, we did. I, yeah, we did. I don't. We, we skipped item six. No, I no, I don't have an item six under committee of the whole. X. No, there's X. Is there's only five. Yeah. Five. I think five. you might be on resolution. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I skipped item <laughs> Y. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, no problem. Um, so motion to adopt. Motion Second. Made Second. By Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Lefebvre to adopt uh, general ordinance number 08 20, an ordinance to amend section 103 uh, GBMC relating to elected officials. Now, this is something that Attorney Chavez touched on previously. Anything to add, Attorney Chavez? <laughs> Yes, Mayor, just one item. Um, since this is the first and final reading, it does require a two-thirds vote. Very good. Did you all hear that? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes thank you. Uh, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, question for Attorney Chavez. Um, I just want to be clear, what we're looking at, the change is basically the bold that's been added into this item? That is correct. Okay, and from your legal perspective, um, th this would be like a permanent ordinance change. Do you feel that that's the, uh, the best course of action or do you think it's worthwhile for us to consider a sunset clause on this? Um, no, this would, the recommendation would be to have this um, in perpetuity. 
um, because this way, should there ever be a replication or so, should something happen, I mean, it's, it's conceivable that, um, you know, something could happen to a candidate during an election period. Um, and so if they're incapacitated um, and aren't able to actually take their position, then you leave a seat unfilled. This gives you the opportunity to allow somebody to serve at least until that time when they're able to take it. So, no, I would recommend this be permanent. Okay, so there's no real downside of making this permanent from your perspective. No. In fact, this is language that a number of municipalities already have on their books. Um, we're just bringing ours up to, to the code, essentially. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Further questions? All right, we do have a motion and a second. Um, and given the fact that we need a, a two-thirds vote here, we're going to use the board. <laughs> All right, and that ordinance is adopted on the first reading uh, and final reading, uh, 11 to 1. Now we are on to resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. Can we take them all at once? Yes, you may, under suspension of the rules, adopt resolutions one through seven together with one roll call vote. Motion to suspend. I second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Entertain a motion to adopt. Negative. Nicholson, no. No. Motion, motion to adopt the resolutions. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. To, Dorf to adopt resolutions one through seven, uh, noting Alder Nicholson's opposition. Please. Mayor, I may take uh, the final vote. The final vote I want to be record. Sorry about that. Yeah. Made a mistake. Um, that's right. We're going to use the board anyway. Uh, number five, I want to be recorded. No. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Alder. So we will use the board here. Mayor, question will I'll be recognized as number five then? Yep. Thank you. And those past 12 0, but noting the opposition from Alder Nicholson on item five. On two, referrals, petitions, and communications. We have Alder Dorf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, two improvement in services due to the great concern regarding the possibility slash probability of extensive flooding to the homes and roads on the south shore of the Bay of Green Bay due to the current height of the bay. I'm requesting a full report on the progress that has been made on obtaining funding to fix the dike on the south shore of the Bay of Green Bay. I would also like a timeline on when work on the dike will begin and how we can finance this work, even if we're not able to obtain state and federal grants. This is to improvement in services. Thank you. And I I will send this to I have the, email. the deputy clerk. Okay. Thanks, Alder. <clears throat> Other petitions and communications? Excuse me. <clears throat> I have one, Alder Johnson. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Alder. Thank you. Uh, this one is to the Finance Committee. Uh, to provide detail regarding the fiscal impact of the resolution to reduce liquor licensing fees and provide recommendations on cost reductions equal to the loss of those revenues. All right, any others? I'll entertain a motion to refer all petitions and communications. Motion to refer. Yeah. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by? Alder Vanderlees. Alder Vanderlees, to refer all eight petitions and communications to the proper authority. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Those petitions and communications have been referred. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to adjourn. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Aye.